I first got involved with Chiwell the week that I arrived in, in Oxford, so I didn't waste much time. I think I always wanted basically to do the, the media studies course with a bit of Oxford attached. It kind of took over quite a lot of my life and then I worked my way up and eventually became, became editor for a term in, uh, in my third year. The great thing about Charwell is that it's always been independent of uh, the Students' Union in Oxford or indeed the Oxford Union itself. Um, I remember getting to interview famous people, which was the first time I got to do that. I interviewed Stephen Fry, Ben Affleck. I think I might have even interviewed Gorbachev when I was there, I, somehow. I have incredibly fond memories of Charwell. I mean, the offices were really absolute pigsty in this little ramshackle hut behind the Oxford Union debating chamber. Nobody ever tidied them up. So in my day, it was the most inordinate amount of trouble. The office was a mess. Uh, it, was, it was always quite chaotic. Um, every week was a kind of crisis deadline. It was always uh, done very late at night. I mean, it was a very di direct line of descent for me. I was on Charles and I started writing diary stories at the Evening Standard. There is no doubt that in sort of CV terms, Charwell is one of the good things to have done, and mainly because a lot of people out of Oxford have heard of Charwell. Without Charwell, I wouldn't be where I am today, without a question. One of the things that you do get out of it is it does make you less likely just to say, I don't agree with this, so I don't want to engage in the argument. I think it's very important, and I think university newspapers, and particularly I should say the university newspaper in Charles uh, case, you know, it does have a huge role to play here because it has a legacy, it has a heritage, it can look forward but it can also look backward. <laughs>